Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Supply Chain Management Planning Optimization Service. My name is Peggy and I'll be your moderator today. We're broadcasting this web conference through Teams live events and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. Participation in the meeting today indicates your consent to being included in the meeting recording. Access to the web recording and all session materials will be delivered by email within five business days post-conference. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Our presenters will be answering questions during today's presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft are Severin Bach, R&D Solution Architect, and Vibhav Pednikar, Senior R&D Solution Architect. Uh, welcome, Severin. You now have the floor. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Severin. I'm working as an R&D Solution Architect in the Fastlook team in Mayor, and I'm more than happy to be here together with my colleague Vibhav um, to speak about the planning optimization service. Um, the planning service or the planning optimization service is a new capability you do find in Previa at the moment. And we like to use this opportunity to, uh, you know, talk about it, to explain the architecture um, that you are informed about this new capability. All right. So what we like to, um, to cover is um, we like to make you understand of the new planning optimization service. We make you aware what is the architecture and have a general, a general overview about it. Mm, we like to explain the, the service fits analytics because that helps you to understand if your current master planning configuration is made for using this new capability. At the end, we go and talk about the, the roadmap. Um, so that's an achievement as well. Uh, what we are not covering today is details about master planning configuration. Um, that means master planning process itself, so why it's needed and, and, and what's the setup in the background, that's not getting, uh, not getting explained today. If you are interested um, to learn more about this, I kindly ask you to visit the Tech Talk, which is available on demand. I think it's a Tech Talk, which is about three, two weeks old, uh, where colleagues of me you know, explain the basics of MRP. You will find the link inside the presentation, and as usual, you're getting access to the presentations as soon the uploading is done. All right, let's have a look to the um, agenda. So, as I already told, first item is overview and architecture. And second, we're going to the customer scenarios. Um, and by the way, that's a real customer scenario we do have. It's not something which is faked or which is somehow um, uh, not real. Um, third, we like to help you to understand how to get started. So where you find resources, um, what is the way to move forward? Um, on the fourth item, uh, Wham is going to, to talk to demo. Um, he's demoing the LCS add-ins. Um, that's, that could be new for you. I mean, you will see it in a demo that you, we do have the opportunity now to install add-ins inside LCS. So I kindly ask you to just pay attention when, 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 when Wham is demoing something. We do need this add-in to connect our service uh, via LCS. Um, and he's going through the application, shows how the service is working, shows how to configure, how to start, how to handle activities, um, but that's later. Um, and at the end, we do have roadmap information for you um, that you do know, okay, what's next? What is our, our roadmap to be done? Um, that we do have all clarity around this feature. Okay, so let's get down um, to the overview and architecture. Um, why, why we do have a planning service now? Um, I mean, you know there is a master planning opportunity in place, and at the moment it's of course possible um, to calculate and to execute those planning executions. But um, those of you who have projects which are using this capability do know that that's that this is a heavy load on the on the SQL. It's a heavy load operation, so um, this is something um, we do know. I mean, we do have telemetry, we do see where we do have the highest peaks on each environment, and and master planning, you know, comes out as the most critical, most heavy load in an environment. So with this um, planning service, we are trying to reduce the load on the SQL during master planning run. So that means we are trying to get rid of 
the executions on our ERP service, our motivation is to yeah to write to provide um, faster master planning, right? Uh, especially for large data sets. So when we are um, thinking about the master planning, which is taking eight hours at night to be done, that's a very long time, especially when a business is growing, when you're adding, when you're adding more companies, more legal entities, and you're running maybe 24 seven operations, the time window where you do have time to execute master planning is, is less and less and less, right? So our, our, our answer to this um, scenario is, is a service which is taking care about this um, the third motivation we do have is that we, as Microsoft, like to introduce new um, capabilities in planning. So with this service, we are more flexible in shipping new features inside master planning. So that means at the moment when we like to introduce new capabilities in MRP planning, you know, we do have a very long time until we uh, do have a new continuous update. And then, you know, you as a customer or as a partner, you need to consume the update, you need to compile it, you need to check against your extension. So you need to test other, so all the stuff needs to be covered, um, which is very, you know, long time for us. So with this capability, we will be able to, you know, switch, yeah, switch on and switch off and add functionalities, which is required to execute a fast planning service. So we will be able to add functionality independent from your ERP. Right, so that's a huge, huge benefit for us. Um, you need to understand that the whole architecture and the whole functionalities will not be there from day one. So that means uh, you cannot start go crazy with your complex scenarios you do have and leverage as a service. Uh, we built, as I told, an analytic service which let you know if your scenario is made for this planning service. But this story is not done when we're going GA. We are building up new new capabilities after and after and after until we reach the complex scenarios, right? So we need to understand that we are built ground up, um, but it's not available everything from day one. Okay. So at the end, you will see when I'm following with my presentation um, that we are getting, you know, the whole execution of MRP out. But let's continue with the presentation here. Um, and the idea is that we do have near real-time planning versus a nightly planning runs. So our motivation is not only to reduce the, the, um, the execution time at night, our idea that we do have a proper bulletproof service in place, which allows you to execute MRP planning during the day, during business hours, multiple times. So let's assume we do have a service in place, which will be able to get this heavy workloads done within, within minutes instead of hours. So let's see what this is about. When we're thinking about MRP planning and master planning execution, we do have at the moment a very long waiting time during the day uh, until the next planning run is getting executed. So normally the execution is happening around 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. depends on the time zone and depends on the business you're in. But that's normally the, 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 the period in time where we do see planning is getting executed. Okay, so um, the planning run is, is, is getting executed. And, and the planning, you need to wait until the planner comes back to office. So he's maybe coming back when you're in the mere time zone at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning. And then he start working and, and you are receiving orders. But you need to wait until the next MRP run is getting executed. So there's a very long lead time um, until you do see the result. Um, okay, so and, and with this service, you know, the service of, 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 of executing this, ex this planning uh this does not requiring a very long lead time right i mean you can trigger the run by order so that means as soon an order is coming in you can kick on the new plan executions and you're getting the results back within minutes so that means you you will be able to skip the whole lead time you do have at the moment by waiting until master plan is getting executed you can you can just go and and execute this 15 times um <laughs> every 50 minute or I mean, every time it's required, right? Because execution time is, is, is quite fast. So that gives you a huge opportunity of an updated dynamic plan, right? Which is close to real time insights to um, required changes on the supply side um, as well on, on existing orders. So every order you're creating, every requirement you're creating will be taken care of directly near real time and not at night. So that's a potential saving you're getting. You, you do have an improved sales um, by reducing um, the total lead time. It means you can easily you know, ship your products faster because you know where it's required. 
Uh, you do not need to wait until nightly plan is done. Okay, so that's the idea. Let's talk about the architecture. The architecture is that you do have supply chain management in place, um, that you can trigger the planning run from the client and you, the client is receiving signals back from the service. So the client is here, the browser you're using. I mean, that's the browser of choice. Um, then we do have the database, uh, we do have a connector and we do have the planning service itself. So assume the planning service is triggered, the connector goes and grab data from the SQL database, is, is bulk copying data into our servers, which is made for planning, which is optimized for planning ex execution, is executing the planning and then use the connector to drop in the results into the ERP database. Okay, so we do see that there is a load, there's a moment in time where we are bulk copying data, and then we do see a moment in time where we bulk import the results of the planning execution. So that's all we do have, and the connector is in place, is, uh, is, is used, you know, the connector gets connected to the ERP by using the LCS add-in. Um, Wham will talk about this in a, in a minute. So um, yeah, that's the general architecture we do have in the background. Um, what about extensions? So um, in the old days, you, you know, there was a possibility to overlayer and change code and that's all all done right we do have extension points at the moment that means you do have points where you can add your customizations um, but with this standard service we do have the whole service is without no code changes so that means the planning execution itself is completely black box for you as a customer and for you as a partner so we will not be able to somehow inject your code snippets you know your code into our service that's all you know not possible um, we need to have a reliable service which is not you know dependent on customizations dependent on on, on, on whatever right it's it's our property um, and we only can guarantee the fast execution when we do know what will happen um, but to help you to, to to be a little bit more flexible you will have opportunities to get extensions pre-processing right you know, before planning is executing you can add your um your extensions and you do have opportunities to have a post-processing so as soon the planning is done and the results are available you can go and create your extensions to you know modify the results or to change something you know that you can work on on the result you got out of the planning service but not directly inside a service um, we are planning to have um, support flow of additional information so that you can have a complex configuration maybe to tell the service to react in a different way. So it's about configuration and changing behavior, but it's not about having an extension inside our service. That's very important to know. And our long term that we do have a flexible service that's not only support the, the import from, from finance operations apps, uh, we like to have a service which is you know <laughs> able to be used by external input as well. So that at the end, it doesn't matter if you're using a FinOps or if you're using another competitor application, you can plug it in and can execute MRP runs. Um, that's our long-term goal where we like to go to. Okay, so um, what's the price? That's the next big question we do have. And, and that's, an, that's a good question because this planning capabilities we do have here comes without extra charges. So that means the planning service or the planning optimization service is included into your current license into your current license means you need to have subscriptions for dynamics during 65 supply chain management or you do have a license for dynamics 65 for finance and have an attached license for supply chain management as well so you need to have this um, supply chain management application a uh, license and then you do have access to the base functionality in the future we might add additional functionalities which might come with additional charges. Um, so that's not clear when this will happen and how this will looks like, but that's just an idea we do have internally that we might have premium services, premium functionalities, which then might require additional charges. Maybe it's an, think about a scenario which is not common for all customers, which is common for specific, you know, 
for specific customers which is requiring more uh, architecture in the background or more SLAs, whatever, where those kind of functionality might be come with additional charges. Um, but that's not there just to give you a heads up what might what is what is coming. Okay, a customer scenario. Um, so let's think about a uh, production uh, a company um, where we do have a production company in Asia and the main distribution center in Europe. So from here, um, the customer brand is transferred to 57 stores across Europe, based on the demand of around 10,000 variety variances. Uh, besides external, the, these brands are, getting, uh, are planned for direct delivery to the stores. So that's a scenario to have in place. And to, as I told at the beginning, it's not a fake scenario. It's something we are running. We do have at the moment in preview available. Um, and this is a feedback uh, and the, the telemetry we do see based on our new capability. Okay, before we go to look into the future of what is in peer view, let's look what is happening at the moment without or before planning automation. So before, as I, as I told at the beginning, we do have a very you know long wait time under the executions happening at night, right? That's all known. Um, they have a big, a long runtime um, on the big SQL, maybe eight to nine hours. So that was the gathering, and 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 we together, so Microsoft together with the partner, together with the customer including engineering, we went and, and fine-tuned fine -tuned the execution of the current um, capability. And um, you know it was possible for us to reduce the time of execution to one and a half hour. Um, that is good in that is a good progress, but still it's a one and a half hour and you need to wait the whole day or the you know a lot of time lot of hours until you're hitting the quiet business hours where you're able to execute heavy batch, uh, heavy batch jobs. Okay, so and with our planning service, we got this result. Okay, so the same scenario, the same customer, the same demand, same item variances. We enabled our service, we plugged it in, and we went to one minute execution time on the same SQL size. Okay. So when you think about a smaller SQL, then we went to an uh, execution of two minutes. That means the SQL service doesn't matter at the end. It's still f crazy fast. The time, which is the, which the time, why is a little bit slower is that we need to bulk copy out of the of the uh, finance operations uh, apps. So our service as well take care of the the amount of data is, is running crazy, and you will see that allows you then to execute this this planning service several times a day as soon as required near real time. So and and please go down to the slide and use it and 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 consume it by yourself because you do see you know what kind of of great um, opportunities you have right cost and capital savings right and um, you can reduce the stock uh, around twenty five to fifty percent because you do know where your um, items are required you do not need to have a maximum stock of I don't know one hundred fifty quantities. Because you know you do not need to know what's happening at night or what is happening across the world with your demand. You do see the demand, you know, every 50 minutes, which is which is awesome. You know, you can increase the sales because you the, you, you can you can ship your um, your products much faster, and and you have improved um, customer service with shorter lead times. You can you can go for 24/7 delivery. So those kinds of options are are possible. Um, you just have a look to it um, and think about how you can use this opportunity to grow the business. And the last sentence here is, is quite a, is quite important because you know that you have the comfort that future business growth will not overload the planning system or cause long run times. Um, let's think about we, we are starting with an implementation which is very you know small. We have two legal entities and not every company is working on MRP and. You know, two years later, you're adding more companies, you're adding more items, you're adding more transactions. All of a sudden, you're hitting a performance issue on MRP planning because your window of execution got long and longer, and other batch jobs got executed. So, and then you do have a dependency on that. And and with this service, you know, you completely don't need to care about this because our service is made for handling very high. Custom benefits, I talked a lot about it. Just have a look, we did um, an overview about it. Uh, eliminate daily time, right? Um, until you need to, also 
eliminate the waiting time until the batch job is getting executed, right? Comfort business uh, grows more frequent planning runs. So it's not made for daily execution or weekly weekly execution. It is uh, made for having an execution every 50 minutes or soon an order gets created, whatever, right? You can configure. Um, how to get started? So how to use this functionality? Um, at the moment, you are in private preview. That means uh, you will not find the opportunity to to join public preview, but we will be available. Uh, we will be able to kick off the public preview soon, so within the next weeks. Okay, so um, stay tuned and um, go and use um, the public preview soon as available. Um, you can go and test on. So as soon as you join the preview program you will be able to test on on test environments okay so non production environments what is important to know that that you have to have a tier 2 sandbox in place or a tier 2 plus sandbox so this service will not be able to connect on a dev box so no closed host environments no tier 1 in microsoft managed hopefully that's used as a build server anyway but um, but but you have to have a tier two plus sandbox in place to enable the service. Um, so selected customers are invited on live environments, right? I mean, there we do have, um, you know, there we do have a group of engineers which are swarmed and, and, and around the customer which are uh, monitoring the execution. And then, you know, we do have them executing in production, but only for very separate uh, selected customers. Because we like to be very careful of adding new functionality. We like to tr we like to test ourselves. We like to learn. We like to get feedback, and then we're opening up for more customers. We don't like to get this feature out for every customer around the world. That's that's not possible for us. Um, we, we like to get it in a controlled way. Um, you need to then install the planning optimization add-in from LCS. Um, where we'll talk about it um, in a bit. And as usual. Um, you know, informations are getting shared on docs, on Yammer, right? Um, so stay tuned on your um, on the on the resources you do know um, to join this preview. There's a Yammer group already in place. So when you go to search on it, you will find it uh, as soon as you are peep, right? When you're a partner, uh, preview early adapter program, and you when you join her, you will find there's a Yammer group, and you can go in and and start talking about it. All right, so let's go to demo. Um, Let's go to demo and let's go and and have a look to the LCS add-in and how it gets installed. Um, Wem, the stage yeah. is yours if you like to yes, take over. Yeah. Yes, let me start uh, sharing my screen and then we should be good. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's your screen. Yeah, thank you. So what I would like to uh, basically go through is how do you install the add in from LCS. Now for in order to do that, right? Uh, yeah, because this is in still in uh, preview soon. There will be a public preview released. What is going to happen that once the public preview is in place from the environment page to the LCS, you would be able to see a tab called environment add ins. And under that you will be able to see the new install new add in button. So when you click that, you will be provided with the options of different add-ins, whatever is available. OK, I think probably there is some screen resolution at my end, but you know this is the, the second one. Which is calling the planning optimization. OK. You need to click on that. And basically there are preview terms to agree, so you need to click on that, go through it, and if you accept all of them, just click the checkbox that you accept and agree to those terms and you need to click install. So once you click install, what happens? Basically the planning optimization service add-in gets installed. It's basically it will change the status and once you know it is successfully installed. I have a environment already prepared with so we don't spend time on that. So if you see that it gets installed, then you get the buttons to uninstall and manage it. So manage basically takes to the documentation basically. 
and that's how you basically install the uh, LCS add-in and why that is required right because the planning service works outside the the ERP application and it's the service on our Azure managed and maintained by Microsoft. So that's how we basically proceed with installing the uh, LCS add-in, you know, like so Severin over to you then. Are you, or you want me to go ahead? Yeah, uh, I'm here. <laughs> All good. I just, you know, need time to find the mute button and share my screen. Um, you will be able, you are able to see my screen again, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So that was demo one installing the add-in. Uh, we are going down to the second demo of today. That's running the optimization fits analysis. So that means uh, we build the functionality to cross check your configuration you do have at the moment in the area of master planning. We like to check your configuration of items, et cetera, et cetera. So what's the level, what the bomb level, et cetera. So based on this result, uh, we, you know, um, sharing if you will be able to use or not, so what, what dependencies you do have and, and yeah, well, let's take a look to it. Okay. Um, yeah. So back again. And basically, we'll look at how the planning optimization fit analysis looks. So, in order to go uh, to reach this menu item, it's basically under modules, master planning, and then under setup, you have this planning optimization fit analysis. Now, what, as Severin mentioned, right, this is to ensure. So, when you once you're in the form, you click the run analysis. So it's basically what it looks at any inconsistencies related to the planning optimization service, you know. Uh, so the, it provides a list of uh, things which currently is probably not honored by the planning optimization service. But as mentioned, once we go with the service built up, uh, we will be able to support all of this. So at the moment, if you see the first one, right, production items with bomb level greater than zero. So there are 56 items where uh, they have bombs which has a, uh, more than one level. It means that basically currently our planning optimization is only targeted for distribution and not for manufacturing. So as and we progress when it gets supported, you know, you would basically see less and less of those uh, inconsistencies uh, with your current setups. It doesn't mean that you cannot uh, uh, use the planning optimization. It's just that you know when you use the planning optimization, it will not honor your current setup. So example, if you have this production bomb lines, when you run the planning optimization, it will basically instead of creating any plant production order, if uh, it will just create plant purchase orders for that. So that's the thing to notice, uh, notice here. Again, if you see actions, you know, like coverage group, where actions calculations enabled. So there are six coverage where we have configured actions. Uh, and what does it mean? Basically that it current version doesn't support that. As and when we add the capabilities, this should be basically eased out. OK, that's a short and sweet uh, explanation around how to run the planning optimization and how do you understand? There is a docs article also which will be provided into the tech talk. Uh, which you can refer to it. OK, Severin, back to you. OK, hey, I will do. So that was like demo two for um, having looked to the analysis. Um, can you see my screen again? Yeah. OK, awesome. So demo three today is, you know, the service by itself. So um, when we go and play around with choosing the play, the planning engine, play around with filters, um, you know, update a plan from net requirements. So just, you know, give you an idea and, and demo how the service can be handled and how it get, you know, how it is, you know, inside our our current application. So when okay. are you ready to yeah. demo? Yes. So back to me again, Great. sharing. So what we'll look at in the today's demo right here, we'll look at how the planning engine uh, basically gets configured, then working with the filters and so on. So I'll just straight away go to the demo. So what I'll do is 
again, you know, in order to use this planning optimization service, the important thing is that your add-in should be installed successfully. And in the beginning, when you come to the master planning setup, you should be able to find the planning optimization preview parameters. Once you click on this parameters, parameter form opens. And in the beginning, it will be basically disabled okay, because I have uh, already done. I'll say no here. I don't want to change. So what is the important thing to understand here is that the connection status when you in the beginning will set getting the status, then it will basically switch to connected or if it issues, it will basically remain that and then. Uh, so the important thing is that it needs to be in connected states. Once it is connected, you enable it. Now this is the connection trader is for the first time. So in between, like once you have started to use the service and you want to disable it and switch back to the uh, the traditional built-in engine for MRP, you could basically just disable it and continue on that model. The status will remain still, you know, connected. And also the note here is basically uh, that you know if you want to uh, disable it, please be sure that none of the users would be using it because it's not uh, a legal entity specific. It's a global setting here. Okay. That's, that's important to understand. And uh, basically uh, when you, what I'd like to show once it is enabled, how does that change basically? So again, I will go to the master planning. I have saved it to favorites most of the thing, so I want to run. Now if you see the changes here, so it, it doesn't go to the traditional thing. It comes back to the planning optimization. And once you click OK, it basically will call the service. I will not do it now, but you know, continue in the next one. OK, so that was about the planning engine. The next topic what I want to talk is basically about you know the planning with filters. Once you have enabled the planning optimization service, you have the possibilities to basically uh, switch between the uh, which provide a plan filter on the plan itself, which will ensure that it is honored during the runtime. OK, now in order to do that, I'll just quickly show you what does it mean. OK, so I have created a master plan. You know, this is I will not explain the rest of the setup because that's not relevant here. You know, you could use an existing plan. Just uh, copy the same setups. The important thing here is that there is a plan filter which gets enabled and this will be on, only honored when you are running the planning optimization service. So when you click on the plan filters, you could basically set up the filters for that. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm basically uh, filtering all the items which belong uh, with begins with M. OK, so that's the purpose and what uh, I may be a planner which is very relevant to specific items and that's out of my concern. So I basically want very specific plan for uh, working with my own items and you know looking at deep demand for them. So that's the first setup. OK, now if I go to master planning, I will select. So that is what you say the configuration time plan filter. If you see I'm not adding anything here. I will just click OK. And if you see it's basically the planning optimization service is working now, so that means it's connected to the service, you know, basically pushing the data there, working on it, and the results will basically be completed and shared with us. So it is important that you know like uh, to understand the applied filter and the runtime filter so you can add more things to it on the runtime filter which I will show. It will ask you whether you want to leave any history log. I will say no at the moment. You see the messages basically getting populated. I'll just clear there. Okay. Oh. I'll go to my planned orders. Select the respective plan what I've run. So if you see. It basically has filtered all the items which begins with them. So this basically means that you can have your own plans with the specific filter. Now the other thing what I wanted to show is like how basically you can use runtime filter with it. OK, 
So in order to do that, I will again go to uh, master planning. Use the same plan. What I'll do is I'll basically include a filter again on the item number. This time what I'll put like anything ending with one. I just want to show you like what we have said. The, the plan filter is any items beginning in with from M and here in the runtime I'm putting the filter as anything which is ending by one. We click OK. I'll run it. And while it is running, what we are expecting basically that you know it this moment we will only be able to see uh, uh, we will not be able to see anything which has been applied on the runtime filter because the items uh, the plan filter is from M star beginning and it's basically uh, the crossover thing or you know like the uh, runtime filter and uh, the uh, switch filters are not basically getting intersected and not being applied. OK, I'll just look at this clear all. Go to the planned orders. Parents, if you see, I just need to. You see there is no change. What my expectation here would be that I want any item starting from M and ending with one. So I will just you have to delete, you know, the previous run. Just to show how the intersection works on the plant filters. And I will go and run my master planning again so to show the intersection. So M and ending with one. Completed. Go back to my planned orders. And if you see now, the list is very sorted. So all the items starting with M, but ending with one. And, and that's how the results will work. So the examples of the intersections are like if I have item A, B, and C, right? And if the runtime filter is specified to D, then no items are planned for that particular plan because there is no. <laughs> Uh, because the part items starting with D or you know basically are not part of the plan filter. But if I select the runtime filter to include A and D, then only A will be uh, planned while D is still not planned because it is not part of the plan filter. And if I run the uh, filter for the item B, then it will basically only include the B number items and it will retain the previously A items which were planned. OK. And if I run it blank, then based on my plan filter where I've selected three items A, B, C, all the three items will be considered and the plan will basically uh, provide the results for those three items only. So this is how basically you uh, look into it and use the plan filters. Allows the specific planners, you know, to have their unique filters and honor their requirements around it. OK, so. We'll just go back to the slide now uh, just to see what's next. Yeah, and then we'll basically so what I like to take you now with is like you know like how the planning optimization service works with the updating of net requirements and the pegging between the supply and demand. So this is like uh, just to show how how the existing framework still works with planning uh, engine. Going back. Quickly to release products. Same, uh, so I've already filtered, you know, like for the same one item. I go to plan, net requirements, and I click date, Just planning. I use the Dyna plan and click OK. So if you see, right, it, it basically moves to the planning optimization service. So it's basically. Once you have enabled the planning optimizer, everything will follow that service. Yeah, the results are basically. Uh, and you can see you know how, how that basically is generating the different things. Okay. I'd like to move to the uh, next uh, thing. Basically, I will change it to standard view. 
and I will I'm selecting an item to show the pegging information just you know like this is the item okay I'll go to my plant orders and we'll select static plan in this case because I've run that would like to filter for And I'll just select one particular plant orders in the pegging sales order. OK, so the pegging information is retained there. I will now move to another item. And what I like to look at here is the pegging information. Now, if you see in the pegging informations, what I have, I have bomb line. You know, then the plant can one line safety stock. So what we want to show that it basically honors. All the uh, demand types which are currently supported in finance and operations, so it doesn't exclude anything. Okay. Just that from the manufacturing point of view, you can't have a production plant production order created, but it will be converted to a plant or a purchase order. That's the that's the only part here. Yeah, moving to the next topic is basically auto farming. You know, in here, basically, what I like to show you, you know, like basically the setup around the product, what I'm going to use, and how that uh, works. So my item is PS two three. Or did I put? Yeah. So what I want to show here about this product is the the setup around item coverage. So what I've said is uh, configured is that you know this basically it it has two warehouses. Okay. The first one is the main warehouse for receiving through purchase orders. So that's my purchase order. I've set up a lead time there also. OK. And then the second is basically the selling warehouse. OK. So what I want to basically ensure, you know, like in, in here, I've basically set it to transfer. So that means, you know, from the main warehouse, it will be transferred to this warehouse and I've overridden the time fences here. So automatic farming time fence I've put like five days. So I have not changed this on the 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 master plan sorry, on the coverage group, but I just wanted to demonstrate it how that farming will work. It depends upon your unique uh, configuration requirements, and that could be configured from that point of view. So I'll just quickly go to the sales order for this item. So I have three sales order basically I've created, which is. 812, 813, and 814. I'll just quickly demonstrate, you know, what are the delivery dates I've basically put into it. So this one I have planned for, you know, like yesterday's date it is, you know, 20th. I should change it to today's date just to, you know, make it much more. Okay, delivery date control is none at the moment for this demonstration. Okay. Similarly, the next sales order. So that is 22. That's still okay for me. Delivery date control is none. And the last one. Should be somewhere 31. Yeah, yeah it is 23rd basically. So if there is five days fence, they all should be automatically formed here. Yeah. Now what I will do is basically I will go to my master planning. Okay. 
and yeah, I'll select the master plan. Basically, I can select anyone. Okay. Then I will click enable auto for me. Now you have to be aware about this that if you want to have the auto farming, there is a feature. OK. Uh, I think I should go quickly on that feature management. Very quickly. And what I'm trying to see that from a feature management, what are the things I've enabled for the master planning? Auto farming for planning optimization is the feature. Basically, you need to ensure that is enabled if you want to work with it. There are different other things, but they are relevant to different stuffs. So that's important. I've already enabled for my environment. Once you enable that, you will be able to, you know, able to get the switch. You should be able to run the functionality. I just want to ensure that I want to filter just my item in order to speed up. And then I click. And what it does at the background, right? It looks at the uh, the planning. Basically, engine looks at the data. It basically will look at the coverage group setting for it. Uh, and once it's basically looking at the time fences for all the demand, you know, it should basically uh, complete it. So there is message. I clear all. And we'll go to the planned orders. I will select the type plan. That's what I used it. I'll just filter my item. Keyboard. Once I'm filtering, I should be able to see there are like plan transfer orders created here under the Dyna plan. And I could also go to the view forming history to look at, you know, like what are the uh, firm planned orders, you know, and that basically should be able to show me the firming date and everything around here. So. Feature management is auto firming planning optimization. Then basically once that is enabled, your configuration is right. You basically are able to auto form those orders. The next part is to basically uh, go into the master plans and how do you run the planning optimization service, right? And basically, if you want to cancel it, what can you do? So what I'll just do is duplicate this. In order to show you. So you can only cancel the planning optimization service job. Once it is running, you know, once it is completed, you don't have any options to cancel. So I let me demonstrate here. I will click on master planning. I'll just select static plan this time. Ensure I don't have any filters, just so it gives me a long time there. And if you want, you could run in batch also, like it honors the batch processing. So that's where to set up a recurrence and all. Not using it for the demonstration. We'll click OK on it. And once it is running, I can go here in the history. And it says me that it is currently processing. Once I click on that, I am able to cancel it. I'll just cancel it now. Take some time basically and not much of time. The thing is once it is cancelled, you will see that in the screen there is this hash log has log basically. If it is yes, you can see the log file and you basically are able to view the warnings or any errors within that. Not all of the um, 
uh, history will have uh, logs. So it's only like those where uh, it will be an errors or something that would be having a log into it. Oh, it should not take this much time. Yeah, so it's done. Okay, yeah. So basically, it's cancelled. Oh, how did it fail? Is this something issue here? handle access okay so i'm sorry for this you know i don't know what it is is this something related to uh, my uh, machine or environment but i'll show you the previous one which we have cancelled so once it is cancelled we'll click on the logs and the log should show you like different kind of warnings and issue around it you know the most of the thing this what it is showing here is that the order type production set production feature is not enabled so changing it to order type. So these are the some th which we already know when we run the planning analysis that it does not honor the bomb lines. So with this, uh, basically uh, I am concluding the demos here, but we'll move into the roadmap slides. Just going forward. So what we want to talk is basically the planning optimization roadmap. So the idea here is that uh, the there are two parts of journey. The existing building planning engine is in progress. At some point we would basically stop investments in it and at later point we'll stop the support. So that's when it will be deprecated. But if you see the path around here that we have pilot customers moving to planning optimizations. Once we have the public pre for distribution, we will be releasing it uh, on the GA. We want the customers and partners to ensure that you know customers are moving along with uh, the progress what we are making to ensuring that they move to the planning optimization engine and have all the capabilities and uh, once the additional planning features are also made available, it will keep on extending and improving. We like you know customers to follow and align that part to ensure that you know they are moving to the new service and at some point you know like uh, we will deprecate the planning uh, built in planning engine. So support for production is in place now, uh, but for limited set as Severin mentioned, you know like there are additional production features which are getting planned. OK, uh, after to, to, uh, throughout the 20 and beyond it, you know like explosion, MRP2, subcontracting, lean and Kanban you know, just to mention. The other part what we want to look at, you know, planning optimization functional enhancements are being done. So if you have negative on hand, you know, it's treated as zero because the planning engine assume just uh, zero to avoid any oversupply. Plan filters, as I explained, you know, in isolation between any plants, so that can be honored at the runtime. Auto firming is based on order. So the important thing to understand the difference, right? If with the traditional or the built in MRP engine, it's always the requirement date. And it goes backward and then you, your firming time frames has to be more than the lead times, right? To ensure that you are able to do that. But planning optimizer is basically look at the order start date, you know, order date as the start date from today basically and not the requirement date. Uh, so it happens within the due time and basically don't need to include the firming time frames for it. Yeah, there are different resources in here. OK, which will be provided as links within the tech talk once it's published online. And thank you very much. So I think we can look at uh, the Q&A. Uh, are there any questions? So yeah, let's like let's take a look to the to the Q&A. Uh, when you're sharing your desktop, OK. Um, yeah, thanks uh, for asking question. Um, the question. That's major important for us to see what kind of questions we need to answer. Um, and um, you know, what is in your head that helps us to, to move the product, to move the functionality in the right direction and, and, and creating FHQs. Um, so thanks for raising questions. 
um, do not stop. Um, I just scrolled through the chat and, and saw some um, questions around the architecture and, and there was a good question around um, how we are going to copy data out um, if, if a data management framework or data lake is going to be used and, and definitely no, that's not going to be used. So we are not to have export projects like we do have at the moment to replicate data in the BYOD or, or no, 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 um, no triggering into a data lake. Uh, we are going to access directly the IXDB in the background on SQL Azure back backend. Okay, so you do see no load on your on your uh, on your environment, which you do see at the moment when you're executing data management framework export projects. And that's the reasons why we why you do not have the opportunity to use a tier one environment because tier one environments are using a local SQL server and not a SQL Azure, and it's not in our property. Um, so that's that's something which is important to know, and that's one of the reasons. Um, there was one question about on premise. Um, so this service is and will be a cloud service only. So you will be not you not you will not be able to host this service inside your on premise properties. That's not the plan. Uh, what we will do is uh, we are thinking about um, getting on premise connected to the cloud service so that you can go and use this service which is in cloud. But you will not be able to run the service in cloud uh, in. <laughs> I'm sorry, on your local business data. Um, there was a question around them want one to one up to two minutes execution duration, and and yes, this time is including um, the data uh, replication. So the bulk copy is included into this minutes. Uh, yeah, check docs article um, that's shared on the presentation. Um, uh, there was a question on security. Um, by the way, that's a good one um, to to share. Um, I mean, security is one of our most most important requirement we do have, and and we are taking care that you know every data which is rent out and this goes into our service is following our um, our um, security best practices. So that's for example the reasons we are using um, we are using uh, the LCS it add in to manage the security in the background. So that there's no way for partners or to customers to mess up security rules we need we have to have. So um, yeah, that's important. Um, the public preview will be um, announced quite soon. So um, just stay tuned. We are talking about weeks here. Um, so um, we'll be there quite soon. Um, and that's the reason you know there was error messages where error messages bam bam got on the screen. And that's the reason why we are in, in, in preview phase, and there's a good reason why we are in preview. So with our, you know, we're trying to ship quality, and we only go public preview, uh, or trying to go public preview, um, when every bugs and every, um, you know, issues are mitigated. And just right. to add that, right? This planning service, uh, there is no bifurcation between test and live. It's the same, and that's why it's important to have tier two environment, tier two and above. Yeah, because it works on the uh, Azure SQL DBs. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other see another question? question in the chat? Yeah, I think what what there was another question when when the planning was the same integration for third party computers, non micro plan. Yeah, so the the aim is you know to allow you to basically uh, connect to the external data also in order to. But that's in the roadmap and WIP. OK, so there is no timing at the moment. But as you stay tuned with the pre program and soon basically you will be hearing how we are progressing on it. So okay. yeah, so I think the most questions um, got answered. Um, thank you very much for joining the tech talk. Thank you very much from the Microsoft stay, team here. Stay tuned on the subject and um, yeah, thanks again for raising questions. Happy to speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks everybody. Uh, thanks for joining and um, if I could please ask everyone in the audience to draw their attention over to the chat window where I've posted a link to a short survey. Um, our presenters would love your feedback and greatly appreciate you taking a moment to fill out that survey. The survey scores on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible. As a reminder, all attendees will receive a link to the recording and all session materials via email within five business days post-conference. Look for an email from Worldwide Virtual Events. 
This does conclude today's Tech Talk. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and our audience for joining. Have a great day or evening wherever you are.